So we've been looking at titrations, acid-based titrations, and how the pH changes during the course of a titration. We've used language like um, equivalence point to determine the point where you have exactly equal amounts of the acid and the base. Now we're going to talk about the mechanics of uh, doing a titration and how you can use indicators to perform. And we're going to look at why they work and how they work and how to choose the right one. So what an indicator is. An indicator is a substance which actually changes color with pH. One of my favorite fun indicators is to take red cabbage and cook it and take some of that liquid off. It's purple to look at. If you go in and add other household items to it, maybe some vinegar, maybe some soap, maybe some baking soda, you're going to see it change a wide array of colors because that substance that's in that dye changes color. Now that's real common for plant dye. Okay, so how does it work? Well, usually it is itself a weak organic acid, meaning it has those carbons, it probably has a COOH group in there somewhere. They are weak acids, and these weak acids are very specific in that they're different colors depending on whether the H is attached in its acid form or it has been removed its conjugate base form. So we say that it's ionized or non-ionized form. It would be two different colors. So here I'm using HIN to represent an indicator. And I'll go ahead and write that on the board so I can kind of reference it as we go. I have the H written first, meaning it has the H on it. This would be its non-ionized form. And it is dissolved in water and as such can do the acid thing donate to the water. And then you've got your indicator without the hydrogen. We would call that its ionized form and it is dissolved in water. And then we would have the proton swap giving me H3O+. So for an indicator to work, there's have to be completely different colors. So I have let this be called color A, which I've written in purple there. And this be color B, which I've written in red. Now we have this equilibrium, if it's going on inside of my flask, so I've got my flask, I have got my acid in there, and I'm adding my base in there, but not only do I have the plain old acid that I'm doing the titration with, I have this indicator in there, okay? So that is inside of there, and this equilibrium is occurring the whole time the acid-base titration is taking place. If there's a whole bunch of this present, and very little of this present, then I'm going to see color A. If this equilibrium shifts in such a way that we have a lot of this and very little of that, then we're going to see the color B, the red, prevail. So we're going to be able to, by changing the pH, affect this equilibrium and affect the color. So let's think of that. I want to guide you through thinking about this shift that's taking place. Okay. We have our flask, we have this thing taking place, it's in our flask, we have this equilibrium going on, and I just want you to only consider this equilibrium right here. Let's say we go in and we add an acid to this indicator, all right? Think about an acid, not the acid indicator, just an, another acid. Let's say we're adding hydrochloric acid. Think about what we're adding and where it would play out in that equilibrium and tell me which way you think this equilibrium would shift by adding an acid. Now this is Le Chatelier's principle taking place, so think about it. Well, hopefully you said it's going to shift to the left. If you didn't really know how to work that out, when you add an acid, you are adding this ingredient right here. You are adding H3O+. No matter what acid you add, you're increasing this, and it tries to use it up, so it shifts it to the left. Now, if that happens, the question is, what color are you going to see eventually? Well, you're going to see color A. You push it this way, you're going to see color A prevail. Okay, now let's think about that same equilibrium. And this time we're going to end up adding a base. Now, I don't see a base anywhere in there, but there's something in there that's affected by a base. And if you add a base, which way is this equilibrium going to shift? Well, did you say that it is going to shift to the right? You'd be correct. Now, why? 
Not only is this equilibrium taking place in there, but we also have an equilibrium um, between the acid and the base. We have H3O plus, whoops, that's not supposed to be up there, H3O plus plus OH minus, okay, um, 2H2O, okay? And we have this equilibrium taking place. When this goes up, this goes down. Another way we could look at it is this way. We have this um, equilibrium expression for this equilibrium. If this goes up, this has to go down. So when I say that I have added a base, when you add a base, this is going to be dropping down. If this is dropping down, Le Chatelier's principle is going to try to make more. So one of the things that you need to make sure you pull forward is anytime this goes up, this goes down, and vice versa. So this is going to shift to the right if you were to add a base to it. Now if you added a base to it, what color are you going to see? Well, we're going to, of course, push it to the right and eventually see color B. So that's how an indicator works. Generally, okay, um, if one of these or the other is, is 10 times bigger, you start seeing the prevalent color of the one over the other. And sometimes one of them is colorless and one of them has got a color. So it doesn't mean that they're two different colors. It could be colorless versus a color. All right, so continuing to look at this. What you have to do is you have to find the right indicator. And the indicators um, are going to change, need to change color around the equivalence point of the titration that you're doing. Okay, so different indicators change color at different pHs. And this has everything to do with the pKa value or the Ka value of this acid. The Ka value of this, depending how strong this acid is, will determine what pH will make what color prevail. Okay, now we use the word equivalent point in a titration. Let's say that inside of this flask we're doing a titration between H, mm, how do I want to write it? HC2H3O2, that's acetic acid, plus KOH. Okay, let's say that that's the reaction that we're doing. I'll get out of the way of it. So that's the reaction that we're doing, and it's going to change color at a certain pH, uh, but the equivalence point which we've used that language already, is when there's equal moles of these two things. We're trying to find that point where you've just added enough base to react with all of the acid. That would be the equivalence point. What the end point is, is the point at which your indicator changes color. Now it's a good indicator if it changes color at a pH near this equivalence point. Okay? So that's how, what we're looking for. Now. Here is a titration curve. I can see here that it has got a pH of the equivalence point around 9. Okay, you see that there? But what we need, we don't have to have something that changes color right at pH 9, but we do need something that changes pH or changes color somewhere in this area. Now why can it be that big wide range of area? Well, that's because anywhere between here, okay, I'm going to pull this down, and here, I pull this down. We're talking, and I've not drawn, drawn very straight lines, but it's a very small volume difference between those two. So if it changes color anywhere in this up and down region here, then it is going to be a good indicator. Okay, so the one that we've drawn is got no color when it has a low pH and it turns this purplish pink color when it's a high pH and um, that means it's probably phenolphthalein as the indicator in this picture. So how do we know to pick one? You're going to pick one whose pKa value, the pKa of the indicator, will be um, help us determine at which it changes pH. So let me go back to the board and let's look at this equilibrium here. So this equilibrium is coming or going by and if it's got uh, equal amounts of both of those, um, we could consider it a buffer and pH equals pKa plus the log of the base form, which is the In minus form, over the acid form, which is Hi. In. Okay, now if these were equal, what would the pH be? It'd be pKa. When you have equal amounts of both, 
That's the point at which the pH equals the pKa. And so you're going to have both color, I mean both, both colors there. So color A and color B both present. How do we get one of them to be more prevalent than the other? Well, we have to shift it one way or the other with pH. So to get this guy more prevalent, it would have to be a pH below the pKa. And to make this one more prevalent, it would be a pH above that. So the pKa value of one, let's say its pKa value was 8.5. Okay, anything above 8.5, you will see the color of the base form. Anything below 8.5, you will see the color of the acid form. So this pKa value of the indicator you're looking for, okay, is what is going to help us pick just the right one for our titration, because different titrations uh, take place at different, uh, the equivalence point is at different pHs. Now what I see here, and certainly nothing here to memorize at all, but we have a bunch of different indicators listed there, and there are different colors that are going to occur. So if we just pick one here, let's pick um, brome creosole purple, okay? Brome creosole purple here is changing colors and it's going to change color around a pH of 6. So if the pH is below 6, you're going to be going towards the yellow. And if it's above 6, it's going to be starting going to, to the um, purple color. Or I mean, it looks more violet or blue in that range. So you have to know what indicator you need to use. Now phenolphthalein, which is right here, is a real common one for... Um, a lot of different acid-base titrations. They will work for um, uh, ones that have a pH of 7, believe it or not, or right, a little bit above 7, and that would be a good one. It's a great one because it changes, and it doesn't look like it's pink there, but it changes colors that are very evident from no color to a real uh, deep pink color. So that's a, what an indicator is, and that's how it works. It's just got different colors and how you pick the right one for the task that you have.